and things like that. Okay, cool. Yes. Well, um, so the famous engine was completely rebuilt from 0 0.35, which is probably the last version that you're uh, familiar with. Uh, that was with the, the kind of funny orange website that we had for a while um, that was a little bit more, uh, I guess it wasn't as user-friendly to navigate. Our new website, uh, we've tried to kind of make it very, uh, you know, streamlined and approachable. We have our learn right here that has all the assets for learning how to use the, the engine. But if uh, you scroll down, it kind of goes through everything that's new with the engine. So now we have mixed mode, which is a combination of DOM and GL. I don't know how familiar all of you guys are with WebGL, but it's a way to bring graphics to the browser. Uh, uh, we use a scene graph, which is uh, a lot like the render tree from the previous version of Famous, but the scene graph is just a way that we structure apps. So similar to a DOM hierarchy, we build this structure next to the DOM that's called the scene graph. It's used in a lot of uh, modern game development. And the scene graph lets us pair both DOM and WebGL elements in the same plane. So I, I think uh, when I jump into showing an example, I'll be able to uh, kind of explain that a little bit more in depth. Uh, so um, we completely rebuilt the architecture. So now there's a, I believe it's an event-based system that uh, updates uh, all of the DOM elements. So similar to something like React where um, we where there's like this shadow DOM, we have this scene graph that we have a event-based queue that pushes the minimal amount of changes that we can do to the to the uh, to the DOM to kind of squeeze as much performance as we can out of uh, our applications. So we completely rebuilt the architecture in that way. Um, it's a little bit more streamlined instead of having modifiers and uh, state modifiers as the previous version from 0 0.35. Now it's a little bit more streamlined, so it's more like an, I would say, an entity component system where you have just nodes on the scene graph, and then you attach components to it, which it sounds kind of, uh, it sounds a little complex right now, but when I kind of break into the example, I'll show you how easy it is and approachable it is. Um, we have a fully rebuilt uh, physics engine, and so it's very uh, modular in uh it's very uh, separated from our engine, so it takes a little bit more hand rolling to get it working, but it can do very complex things like uh, gravity. We have springs. We have uh, you know, 3D gravity, uh, all sorts of forces, uh, hinges, distance, and so um, it makes it so you can do some pretty complex stuff uh, within your applications, and then you just link the, you run a simulation, this physics sim simulation, and then you just link it to components that update the elements in your app. So um, that's one way to get, you know, really realistic movements and, uh, yeah, really unique uh, animations. Uh, the eventing system's been streamlined, so we have uh, an event system where UI events go up and then uh, events go down, or uh, program events go down, so it really it prevents any leaks. And it's a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more performance that you can get out of this method that we've done. Uh, the the sizing's been improved as well. So we have proportional sizing, and we have uh, we have proportional uh, differential and uh, absolute sizing. So you can size different elements in your app based on their parents, based on the screen. So um, and then based on a pixel value. So it really makes it easy for. Uh, developing for different sized uh, devices and uh, cross or cross uh, device compatibility because you can specify element size based on their parents and uh, yeah and so uh, the framework as well it's it's very modular every single component has been broken down into separate uh, files so it does take a little bit more work in uh, You'll see at a lot of our examples, we have to require in all of our dependencies, but it makes it so you can only, since uh, you can really tailor your application, so you can only pull in the parts that you want so you don't crowd your, your, uh, your bundled file, and it makes it a lot more, uh, it makes it a lot smaller, so you don't pull in the entire engine with every single capability, you just pull in the things that you need. So it makes it so you can uh, really, uh, you know, get the most out of your bundled file. and. Uh, Let's see, what else? Uh, yeah, so right now we're open source, full MIT license, so uh, it's on GitHub right now, which uh, I'll go to here. 
to, I guess, just start jumping into a uh, starting a new famous project. So I don't know if you guys have laptops with you and you want to follow along. Uh, go to the GitHub page, Famous uh, Engine. Or no, not Engine, sorry. Go to Engine Seed. And this is a seed project that you can pull down and um, just create a new uh, famous project. So um, I'm just going to clone this onto the desktop. And so I'm just going to install the dependencies. Uh, right now I just have uh, NPM installed and uh, Git as well to get this down. And so what this is doing is just uh, going to the package JSON, uh, installing our dependencies, getting it set up. Uh, You'll see here. Morgan, can you increase your font size a little bit? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, on, would you like this on here? Yeah, uh, yeah. that is much better. Can you okay. <laughs> so we have these scripts. So we've got a build script, a watch script, a start. Uh, yeah, yeah, the yes. terminal as well, Morgan. Terminal as well, a little, a little bit. Okay. And, and if you could probably scroll up a little. Yeah, so <laughs> all I, I typed in was, uh, you know, just basic. I cloned down uh, the repo. Then, uh, yeah, here, here's our clone. And then I changed into the directory because it I cloned it down just in the engine seed directory. Changed into that directory and then just ran npmi. You can run npmi or npm install. And... Um, that will just go through and install all these dependencies here in the package JSON. And so I'm, I'm not sure how familiar everybody is with NPM. Uh, I'm just going to open up this in an editor. Let's see if I can make this bigger. And you'll see here, sorry, this isn't very big, but here's my node modules uh, file. And so these are the dependencies that I installed when I ran NPM I. So you can see here, we have our famous dependency, and you know how I was talking about it being uh, famous being more modular. You'll see here that here are all of our uh, the directories that contain each little uh, part of our famous uh, app. And so when we later go and write the actual famous code, uh, we will be referencing these uh, files to grab in the different parts. So um, just the, going from the file structure, um, Crap, I don't know how to zoom in here. I forgot the, the key command for a zoom. Uh, it's control and then mouse scroll. Hold control. control and then scroll the mouse. Control and scroll. Did it work? No. Hold it's control. Control, not command. Yeah, I'm hitting control and I'm scrolling. Oh, well. But anyways, uh, right here, if you guys have opened up your, your file, if you just open up this file, you'll see that we have the node modules, which we just installed. You have your pa package JSON, which I said has all of the dependencies in it. And then you have this public folder right here. This includes your index.html, and then our images are referenced in there as well. Our source folder, this is where all our... Uh, index file in. So this is where our famous code is going to go. So I'm going to open this back up in the editor here and you'll see, like I said, source index.js. Uh, the public, when we run a, uh, a build, I'll show you this in a second, it will bundle all of the code right here and uh, it will output it in this file. There's a script that you run, uh, the npm run dev, and so it will, uh, it will actually put the the uh, outputted bundled JavaScript file into this public folder here. And so when you want to go serve this off of your own site, you just grab this index.html. It's referenced in the bundle, which will be put in the same file. So let's go here. Um, I just ran npm install, so I'm going to run npm run dev. And so what that's going to do, it's, it's uh, right here, it's requiring in these two dependencies, it's going to pull in those files, bundle them together, and then output the file here. So you'll see that here's all of our bundled JS. Um, and it's getting referenced here. So just running that script, you'll see that it's bundling it and then serving it on port uh, 1618. So if I go to the browser, you'll see this uh, spinning animation. If you just go to localhost 1618. 
And if, if you guys are kind of confused with the steps, uh, it tells you all of the commands here, uh, what's, uh, you know, as well as on the, re or on the repo. So if you go here, engine seed, it will give you full directions on how to start. So in, in case you didn't follow along from what I, I was talking about, here's the command npm run dev. And that, like I said, bundles all of your, the code that you've written and then puts it into that bundled file and then serves it up on port 1618. So, and then if you have any questions, uh, you know, we have our Slack channel. Here's good resources on how to figure out where to go from there. So, um, yeah, let's go here. So you'll see here we have this spinning icon right here, or logo. Pretty simple stuff. Um, we inspect it. You can see this is just a single image that's spinning right now. And so that's the famous engine updating on every tick. And we've written, like I said, within this source file in the index.js, here's the code that's running that uh, animation right here. So um, just to go over this, um, I, I guess I'll start from the very top and kind of go over the scene graph and explain about that. And then uh, maybe, you know, try to code together a cool little example, depending on what you guys want to see. So um, let's see here. I believe if you go to famous.org slash learn, which I said is a pretty good resource to figure out what's going on. Um, we talk about the scene graph here. Every single app is organized in a structure under the, the scene graph. So um, instead of, uh, it's kind of like uh, an HTML tree and you have you know, your parents and then uh, your children. Uh, every child is aware of its own position and uh, its parent's position gets passed down to the child. So if you think of this as like the skeleton of your app, this will be the root node, then you extend it, you add another node, and say this would have like a footer in it, and you would put this, in the, put this to the side, and when you move this node, these two nodes move with it. So you can think of uh, the structure of the scene graph that we build our app in as a skeleton of our application. So there's another image here. Uh, you can see here we have a node for the header, and so you would extend a node out, you would add a child node, and then you would position that to the top, then you would add a content node, position that to, to the middle, and then add a footer node, position that at the bottom. When you position your content node to the middle, these three uh, elements get positioned relative to it. So everything is positioned relative to its parent to the top left corner, and then as you add to the x and y coordinates, it moves to the right, bottom right. So to position these elements, once you position the content right here, you would position this content element uh, uh, in relation to the parent app. So you would say, okay, go a third of the way down, or a, uh, I don't know, 25% of the way down, or probably less down, and then add children to it. And then once you add your children, then you would say, okay, position these over uh, a certain amount of the way from that content area. So. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if that makes any sense. Uh, if there's any, do you guys have any questions about that before I jump into kind of showing how the, um, I guess you attach uh, components or is is that good? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So, like I said, you have your root app or your root node, and then you extend these nodes, and then you attach uh, elements to them. Everything that you attach to the scene graph is called a component. Um, these different components can be anything from a DOM element, uh, a position component, an align component, um, a rotation component. And so you attach these components uh, to the nodes. So you decorate these nodes with components. So when you go here, you can see that we have all these components. Uh, DOM element, mesh, align, mount point, camera, opacity, origin, rotation, scale, size. Um, when you attach these, uh, if, if you think of the, if you think of the scene graph as a skeleton, then you can think of the components kind of as the skin or the attributes of the, whatever gives uh, each one of the nodes, it gives it a, uh, it makes it what it is. So a node is just an empty container 
and then you attach these components to it. So you, say you have a, a, an empty node that's extended from the, uh, from the root, and then you want to attach a DOM element to it. Um, you attach the DOM element, then you style that DOM element, and then you say, okay, I want that DOM element to be a footer. So then you would attach a position component and uh, put that towards the bottom, or attach an align component and push it to, and move it to the bottom. So um, really all, um, all the a application is, is just an extension of the scene graph, and then each of these nodes are then styled with behaviors uh, via components. So you, you just uh, decorate these nodes with components, and they attach certain behaviors. And uh, components can be anything to a simple object um, with, uh, say, an on, like, listening for the size change or an event, or it could be something, uh, you know, like a, uh, like I said, a position or a DOM element or whatever. So now that I've kind of gone over the, the structure of a famous application, I'm going to show you how to start building this actual tree structure. So if you go here, you'll see that um, each one of our, our components need each uh, component here. Uh, sorry, let's go over here. Each component needs to be uh, required in at the top. So right now we have required in a DOM element component. And then we've initialized our famous app. So this starts uh, this starts our famous engine. So the famous engine is a request animation frame loop, which you can kind of think of as a optimized set interval that just uh, hits the browser and it gets a, a time update and it updates the engine on every tick. And so when um, you're trying to do these animations and these transitions, Famous is using this optimized uh, timer to keep track of your animations. And um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot more, it gives you a lot more performance and it's another way to, uh, uh, I guess, squeeze uh, more performance out of the browser. So we initialize our famous engine and then right here we create the scene and then add a child. So if you go back to our, uh, let's see, our scene graph, this root node here is this line of code right here. So famous engine create scene, you're creating this scene graph, and then you're adding a child to it. So this right here, this logo is just a node. It's just a node in the tree. So uh, this node, every single node, uh, by default comes prepackaged with uh, components already attached. So we are just setting the internal components of this node. So we are setting a size mode, uh, setting the size, the absolute size, setting the line, setting the mount point, setting the origin. Each one of these, you could do this, uh, you could do the exact same thing by, say, importing a, uh, let's see here, if we go var align, and we go uh, require, and then we do famous uh, components, and then go align you'll see that this right here, this set a line is the same thing as just attaching a, um, a component to the node. So here's our logo node, which we created here. We are going to go new, align, and then pass in our node. And then to set it, you just go set. Oh, if I save, you'll see that uh, are right now there's a script that's running that rebundles this. So as I make changes here and save, it will update. So you'll see. Oh, I did this out of because these are all chained off. So right now we have an align component at the bottom, saving, refreshing, and you, see, you can see that it's doing the same thing. So this. you'll see that this uh, align component, which is just taking, the, it's setting the position based on the parent, so 0.25, so that's 25% of the parent size. Um, so this is just aligning it to the top 25% of its parent, which is the screen, because there's no node above it. So um, 
let's begin by, uh, I'm going to get rid of th this right here. We're just adding a simple component and then updating it so it spins. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to go down. I'm going to get rid of all these comments because uh, they're a bit distracting. And I'm just going to start with a basic scene. <clears throat> and <clears throat> right here you can see that we're attaching a DOM element and then we're setting the tag name to an image. By default, a DOM element is just a div. So when I go like this and I create the scene, this will create a single DOM element that's the size of the screen because there's no size set to it. So uh, it will inherit its parent size. So when I go, I'm going to give it a property. This is just a way to set uh, inline CSS styles, so I'm going to go background uh, blue. So you'll see that this this right here, we're adding a child, we're, init we're initializing the engine, uh, the background's going to be blue, so it's going to be the size of the screen because I haven't attached any components to this node. So when I go uh, var, or logo, Uh, you have to set the size mode, which uh, I'm just going to do the shorthand of 111, one, which means uh, absolute size, so a pixel size. And you can chain all of the methods on these, on these uh, nodes. So you can go set uh, absolute size. And I'm going to give it a pixel size of 250 by 250. So set size mode and you'll see here that our square our div is now 250 by 250 and um, we have yeah. Morgan set. can you try to zoom in if you press command and equal you should be able to zoom in command and equal yeah perfect yeah, yes it's much better okay so now we have we have our root node created we've attached a DOM element to it we've given it the CSS style background blue. Um, this right here, you could also do by uh, you can do it programmatically like uh, l.set uh, property. And uh, that'll do the same thing. So if you check out uh, famous.org, there is a HTML content and styling. This will go over if, in case you're, you're curious about uh, the different ways to set the content and uh, apply properties to it. The HTML content and the HTML styling goes over how to do this. So um, you can set a property like this, or you can give it a, the, the best way to do it is to give it a class. And so you set a class, and then you could just style it with uh, external uh, CSS. So um, right here, I'm just adding a inline style background blue set property, um, setting the size mode to this. Um, so we have the size mode set. If I want to position this at the bottom, there's two ways to do it. If it's going to be static, and uh, yeah, if it's going to be static, you just want to add, you can just call a method directly on the node. So you can go logo dot set align. And that's going to go one, one. And this is 100% of its parents uh, height and width. So that's going to put it at this bottom corner. So it's going to take this corner right here and then put it on this bottom corner. And so that's going to go off of the screen. So I'm going to put it at 0.95. So you can kind of see what's going on. And you see that it moves the top corner to the bottom 0.95% uh, of the parent. And so when I then, in, and say I want to say, or say I want to move it by its, uh, let's get rid of this. Say you want to uh, translate based on this corner or the middle. Say I want to go off of the middle of this uh, child node and then put it 
down to the bottom right corner, that's when you set the mount point. So I'm going to set a mount point, which is 0 0.5, and that's just 50% of its own height and width. So that's in the corner. That's in the center. So if I go like this, and I go one one. you'll see that now the center is moved to the very bottom right corner of the parent. And if I set this to 1, 1, you'll see now my square, this corner is set to the bottom right. So mount point and align give you a way to uh, control a node and set the position uh, of an element based on its parent. And so that makes it really easy to, to kind of fine tune where you want everything to be. And um, these are just internal components, like I said, of the node. So if you want this to be static and you just you say, okay, I'm going to set this here and I'm not going to move it or I'm not going to try to animate it, uh, you use these uh, internal methods. If not, that's when you uh, import a component like we did before. I have the line here. And so instead of setting the line this way, you go uh, logo, or var align, you can call it anything, I'm just going to call it line, new align, I'm going to pass in the logo, which is the node, and then I'm going to set the position. So I could do it that way, or I could go align.set, and I'm going to give it uh, 1, 1. And this takes x, y, and z values. So when I go like that, it's doing the same thing. It's at the bottom right. And the cool thing about adding a component is, is that the third or the fourth argument is an option is an, is an object that you can pass in with certain uh, settings in it. Or uh, one of them is duration. So when I save this uh, this method is going to set. Uh, the position of our node, our logo node, to the bottom right corner, and it's going to take two thousand, or it's going to take two seconds to do that, or two uh, two thousand milliseconds. And so it's going to, by default, if you don't set the position, like I said, it starts at the top uh, right, and uh, it's going to go this option right here. When you give it a duration using the any one of these components, when you pass in a duration object, um, it's you'll see here that it's going to move to the bottom right corner. So um, what this does is it creates a equal distribution of uh, frames between the starting point and the ending point. But if you want to have a more natural, uh, uh, a more natural movement or animation, like a tweening animation, you can add a curve. And there's several of them. So uh, I'm going to do out elastic. And you'll see that now it has this very uh, more lifelike uh, animation. And so you can go here to see all of the eats and curves that we have. And there's quite a few of them. Uh, this is just famous.org slash learn slash easing dash curves. And you can see all of the different easing curves that we have. And you can use them. You can even create your own. So um, we give you instructions on how to create your own easing curve here. And so that makes it so when you have a component and you add uh, as the fourth argument this duration, you can then specify the easing curve. So um, like I said, when you're animating, you want to add a component. But if you're not and it's just going to be static, that's when you just call this method. And so that's just a static value. That's always going to stay at the bottom. Or at a certain event, you can set you can set it again. But for the most part, if you're trying to use one of these uh, transitions, you want to attach a component. And uh, yeah, so uh, right now you don't want to use both. Uh, this is like a problem that a couple people have ran into is when they try to set the align here, and then they also attach a align component to a node you have to go either one or the other. So you can't have both a internal, uh, or an internal component, a line component and 
a component that you add working on the same node because then they will start to conflict with each other and it will it just won't work. So you want to choose one or the other. So if you're animating, say a position or the rotation. So let's uh, add a rotation. And you add it the same way. I'm going to go logo. And so I also have to uh, attach it up here. So, uh, and so now I have a rotation component. And the same way I can set it, I can go um, rotation.set uh, 0, 0, 0. Um, I'm going to go. So that's, uh, this is X, Y, and Z. So the Z axis goes from the back of the screen to the uh, front of the screen. So when I'm rotating it on its X axis, or on its Z axis, it's going to rotate uh, like a pinwheel. But as you'll see here, since I haven't set the origin point, it will rotate based on this top corner. So similar to mount point, if you're doing a rotation, you have to set the origin. So I'm going to also set the origin to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So this is like the rotation uh, origin. So this is the point where you where the node is going to rotate around. So you can't see it now. Let's uh, give it a duration, and I'm going to give it a 1,000. Uh, let's go three. So this is going to be three seconds, and um, let me pull this over. I'm going to also give it a curve. Um, and when I go here, you'll see that it now rotates as well. And it's rotating around its center point because I set the origin on it. So if I, uh, if I get rid of this, you'll see that it rotates off this top right corner. So the origin sets where a node is going to rotate around or scale from. So um, if you want to do an animation with sizing a node, um, it's best to use scale because it's, it's uh, hardware, or it's, 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 a, it's a lot more performance, uh, it's a lot better performance if you're using the scale instead of sizing. And so, um, let's see here. Um, we'll add a scale. And this is just going to animate the size. And same thing, you need to import it up top. Save. Uh, let's do scale. And so scale only takes, uh, or it takes x, y, and z as well. One is default. And so if I go uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it's going to shrink. And so it's going to shrink based on this origin point. So it's going to uh, shrink from the center. And so when I go, yeah, I'm going to leave that one. All right. And then give this a duration. I'm just going to give this uh, in bounce. Duration. So I'm going to set the duration to um, 1,000 as well. Uh, curve. Let's see. Uh, so you'll see the same thing happens where it shrinks in size. So yeah, so um, like I said, these components, you just decorate your nodes with components. And uh, then whatever... Uh, 
whatever you set on the component then gets uh, shown up on the node. And so you'll see here when I extend the scene graph, and so going back to our scene graph here, if we go back to scene graph, and you'll see right now we just have one node in our tree. If we have a child node, I'll show you how this child, similar to the parent here where it starts at the top right corner, it's when I add a child, it is going to inherit its parent size and, uh, and position. And it's going to start from the top uh, left corner. So you create another child. So I'm going to call this var child. Var child of logo equals logo. And so that's going to give me a node. So this is returning a new node off of our scene graph. So we can think of it as this node right here. And so when I add this logo, uh, or this child of logo node, um, let me go here, and I want to add a DOM element component to it. And I'm going to give it some properties which are just, like I said, CSS properties. Um, this could be background. And you can either write it like this as a string, or uh, I'm going to make this red. Uh, and since I haven't set the size of this child logo, you'll see that it's going to be the same size as the parent. So you see here that the parent, it inherits its size from the parent. So as the parent scales and all everything that happens to the parent happens to the child. And you'll see that right now since the, the size isn't uh, set, it's the exact same size as its parent. Uh, let's set its size right now. Uh, and the size mode is just, it, it seems a little inconvenient. Uh, it's just a way to give you uh, relative and differential sizing, which I won't get into uh, right now, but just think of that as a way to set like uh, proportional sizing and sizing based off of the parent. So it's another way to fine tune your size. But since I'm just doing, uh, since I'm just doing this simple example, I'm just going to use absolute size uh, since it's easier to comprehend. And so now you can see that since I didn't set a position or anything else, when I add a child, by default, it starts at the top left corner of its parent. Just like how this, uh, since uh, there was no parent, it, inher it inherited the size of the screen. So if this was, say, an iframe and you size the iframe, this would be the same size as the iframe. So um, right now, I have this little child, or this element within, uh, or which is a child of, uh, of our logo. And the same thing, I can add components to it. So I could go, uh, say I want to align this to the center of the parent. So I want to put this element to the center here. First, I'm going to set the align to the center, which is going to put this top left corner to the center of the parent. So um, let's go. Let's, I'm going to set it directly on the node because I'm not going to change this. I'm not going to animate it. Child of logo dot set um, align. And you'll see now that it's right here to the, to the center of the parent. And so if you want the point of translation uh, to be set on the child, that's when you set the, um, set the origin. Or, sorry, set the mount point. So, so you'll see now that it's perfectly centered on the parent. Um, if you put this at one and you translate based on its bottom corner, you'll see that it's not quite at the center. It's wrote, or it was moved to the center of the parent by its bottom left corner. So, um, Hopefully that, I, I feel like a lot of people struggle with the idea of uh, origin and mount point and uh, align. And so it's just a way to fine tune and uh, center things a lot more easy, or a lot easier. And so um, 
Yeah, I guess uh, I can show. I, I'm not sure what else you guys want to know right now. I'm, I'm not sure how we're doing on time either. Um, I can keep going. Uh, would you like me to? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. We have a few questions now. Can I, okay. Can I line be negative? Can I move it to the left? To, to left? Yes, yes, one? you can. Um, if you want to, like, say you wanted to start this off the screen, you could do, like, a negative two and start from off the screen, and then, like, I guess let's do that now. So, like, uh, we can initially set the align to um, negative two off the screen. Can you do that with the child? Excuse me? Uh, can you do that with the child? Yes, you can. So, uh, would you like me to do it on the child? Um. That's wrong, but yes. <laughs> so, you'll see now that it's like negative two, so it's twice the size of the parent away based on the center because the mount point is uh, set to the center, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So, um, it's, it's, I feel like uh, when you're doing the negatives, it's great if you want to start something off the screen and then move it on later. Uh, that's one way to do that. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if that, does that answer your question? Yeah, yes. I was going to ask about performance. You were talking how it's more performant for uh, scale to use the component, uh, the, the, um, uh, the scale component. Uh, yeah, it's, when, you're do, it. when you're doing an animation. When you're doing an animation. And for other things, when you were saying, you should use a component only when you need to do an animation. Um, are there performance issues associated with that? Like of whether you choose to use the set or whether you choose a component? Um, if, if these methods right here, so set absolute size, behind the scenes it's doing the exact same thing, but it's obscured from you because it's within uh, the node class. So in the node class, when you set the size, it is basically uh, adding one of these elements, uh, pulling it in for you, and then setting it this way. So there shouldn't be any difference in performance, if that makes sense. That does, yeah. And I was going to ask, um, in general, for sort of if you're, you're working with Famous, are there certain ways of working that will be better for performance? Yeah. Um, I know reducing the... Reducing the amount of nodes that you create, um, you also don't want to uh, you don't want to uh, touch the DOM at all. So it's kind of a strange way of working, and it kind of like kind of makes you step back and be like, "Oh wait, what am I doing?" Because it's a virtual like uh, famous is just a representation of what to draw, and so when you're trying to like grab. Uh, I guess every time you're trying to uh, ping the DOM, that there's an, uh, a cost associated associated with it. So um, there is a section on our website if you go to uh, I believe it's pitfalls. Yeah, pinging the DOM, set interval, set timeout. Some of these basic things you can do within the famous engine, uh, which are very similar. Uh, if you, say you want to get a, like a set timeout, you can go like this. Dot get clock. And it has the set. It has the same uh, the same functionality as a set timeout. It's just uh, it's using the timer that's passed in with the request animation frame. So you're not actually pinging the DOM, and it's 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 abstracted in a way that this will run within a web worker as well. So it's it, every time that you you're requesting the DOM for something you you probably shouldn't, and you can think of a way to do it using Famous, and we give you certain ways to do that. So if you're trying to get the size, instead of going window.getSize, you would get the size of the root. So you would go logo.addComponent. And like I said, a component can just be an object, and you just give it an on size, size change method. And this has X, Y, and Z. So instead of pinging like window dot inner height or wi window dot inner width, you would go like 
uh, in this right here, you'll see when I save and refresh, uh, maybe I didn't complete my... Yeah, you have a typo on line 24. Okay, thanks. Line 24, let's see here. And component. Yeah, thanks. Um, so you see, we just added a component to it, uh, added a size change method, on size change method. Uh, and when I refresh, hopefully I didn't have a typo, you'll see that here is our on size change that it, it fired once when uh, it fired once on the initial load, so we got our screen size. And uh, I don't know why it's doing now. But uh, that should fire every time. I guess not right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyways. Uh, I think maybe the logo is the blue box, and so it's not changing size. You maybe you uh, yes, that, yes. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Okay. Yeah, it's a good call. <laughs> um, so I would go, uh, I guess I would, I would have to add this to uh, the root. Yeah. And so create a new, I guess that'll break, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go root. Logo. Or I think I would have to add, yeah. And then down here, I would have to go root. There we go. So, um, yeah, that's how that's how you go about getting the window inner height and width. So instead of just requesting uh, directly in the window, um, there's a, there's a couple of abstractions that you have to do. Um, that I guess the there's a whole list of them of certain things that you want to do. Um, native DOM events. We have our own eventing system that, like I said, works uh, within workers. Um, some of the, uh, the CSS, if you're trying to rapidly change the, the color of an element, you could consider using uh, WebGL for that, which I, I didn't really get a lot of time to go into WebGL. I guess I could just show an example really quick. Um, yes. uh, I always forget the require state, WebGL render. Yes. That throws an error. No. There we go. And uh, the why it's called mixed mode is because each one of these nodes, like how we end, added a DOM element component to this node, you can actually add a uh, a mesh component to the same node. So you'll see here if I add a mesh, which is just a uh, there's a single canvas element that gets put here. And then it gets plot in the same coordinate as our DOM element. So I'm going to add it to uh, the logo. So here's our logo. And then you have to set the geometry. So the geometry is just uh, the vertices and other information of uh, what your uh, what your mesh is going to look like. It describes the mesh. So I'm going to set the geometry. Uh, to a sphere. Uh, there's a bunch of primitives that we uh, have listed on our website, I believe, somewhere. Uh, it's, I believe it's in the docs, but there's a bunch of primitives that you can look. Um, let's see. And if you are confused about this structure right here, this is just referencing the folders based on here. So, um, when you're trying to find these paths and you're kind of curious about how this get, relates, you'll see that here, like WebGL render, renderables mesh, you'll go WebGL renderables mesh. And so um, WebGL geometry 
Then we have the primitives and uh, sphere. So this is one of our primitives that we have. So we have all these primitives that you can use. Um, I'm just adding a sphere, and then I'm just going to set the base color. And then you need to use a, with uh, WebGL, you need to use a color primitive, uh, or a color utility. see here and if I rotate it uh, you'll see that they they are in the same bounding box so this sphere is the same size as um, as our Dom element and so when I rotate it here where is our rotation rotation With this, uh, I didn't set the X, Y, and Z size, so you need to set X, Y, and Z for our uh, mesh to become 3D. So absolute size, I'm going to also set to 250. Which now, we have our mesh living in the same plane. So, um, yeah, I mean... I guess, uh, I don't know, hopefully that makes uh, it a little question. bit more this, this clear is, on that. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, Morgan, another question? Yeah, these yes. Building, these building components, like dome element, they don't have default constructors. So you can't actually call it add components on the nodes. And did you hear that, Morgan? Excuse me? Did you hear that? Uh, I, did, I didn't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these uh, components do not have default constructors, so you can never call node that add components on them. Node dot add component. Yeah. So can you say node dot add l, which is a dope component, logo dot add add component e l? No, that won't work, right? Um, I. Because you ne can never. No, work. because it needs it needs a node to be associated with. So what does the add component do? Um, the add component is uh, if you already have a component uh, created, you can add another component, or you can add components just for on size or for capturing events like on receive. Uh, R E C E I V. Uh, this right here will pick up events. So you can only add literal components. You can't add like a, a, a component with a constructor. I I am not a hundred percent sure because I guess I haven't tried to build a component or I, I haven't tried to do it in that way before. I'm I'm sh maybe there is a way to do it, and I'm I'm by no means the expert on uh, some of the other. Uh, I guess I've only used the add component uh, for adding uh, custom components, if if that makes sense. So. Uh, if I go like this, and I go, um, where is our logo dot add UI event? Yes, blah 
that way. Anyways, um, I didn't say ed UI event. So now you uh, you add you can add custom components with some of these methods on them to pick up um, either an on size change events. You could also uh, you can give it an on update, and the on update will update uh, every time it gets pass to, uh, if I go like this, our, So an on update method will uh, get called every time. Okay, I'm going to add the custom component. And this is uh, pretty much what was done in the first animation that you guys saw, where there was the famous engine dot request update on next tick. Custom component. So this is just going to create a loop where it's going to say on the next, uh, you're going to throw this in the update queue. And it's uh, on the next tick of the engine, which is up to 60 frames per second, it's going to call this. Uh, if you put a component within the update queue that has an on update method, it will call it continually, uh, continuously. So this should... Um, So you see how it's constantly uh, rotating? That's because uh, I'm throwing it back itself back in the queue, and because it has this on update method, it's going to call this method on every tick of the engine. So um, this is just a way to create an endless, uh, I guess, uh, loop. And this is a lot more. I guess this has like a, a more performance, I guess, than a uh, set interval. If you're trying to do, you could do the same thing by doing uh, set interval. So 16. So if you're trying to do six, uh, 60 frames per second, it's it's more or less the same as this, but slightly more optimized. So you're just setting an in interval that calls this function up to 60 frames per second. So I'm, I'm not going to log it because it'll probably blow up my machine with, well, I, I guess it, will, it won't blow it up, but. And you'll see here that it's just calling every single time. So um, that right there is essentially doing the same as this. But with the custom component, when you add an un-update method, it's more optimized for uh, these uh, consistent animations. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if that <laughs> if that answered your question, but um, uh, basically, you only can all add component using a custom component, not one with built-in components. Yeah, yeah. And don't don't quote me on that directly because, uh, like I said, I'm not I'm not like an expert if, by any means. Um, you, if if you do want to find other examples or if you have a more specific question, you can ping us on our Slack and some of our actual platform engineers who wrote uh, a lot of the functionality could probably answer to it better than I can because I know there's probably some edge case that I haven't uh, heard of yet, and I don't want to say no, you can't do it that way, but. At least for everything I've built, I've just added uh, components uh, in uh, passing it into the constructor, passing a node into the constructor. Um, another question: You mentioned not touching a dome uh, for performance reason. Mm -hmm. What if you have a famous uh, scene graph, but you attach a React managed component on one of the scene graph? Would that be a performance problem? Um, I think. Uh, Personally, I, I, I can't speak any, I guess I can't uh, have any useful answer to that question right now because uh, 
I guess I haven't seen uh, or I haven't tried doing that before. And I know some people have had problems with trying to integrate both Famous and React and Famous and Meteor in certain ways because um, the way that React does DOM diffing and Famous does DOM diffing, like there is not an actual element that's always tied to a single uh, node. So this element may change depending on the DOM diffing and what type of changes you make. So I think it makes it hard when you're trying to have React and Famous talk together because they're both working off of uh, a kind of like stru a, a ghost tr structure beside the DOM. So um, I, know, I know there are certain hacks on how to do it, and there's a lot of discussion about it within the famous community Slack. And there are a lot more people with better knowledge and uh, I guess a lot more experience that can answer it better than I could. So. You said that Famous does dome dipping too. It has a concept of I, I believe it does. I believe it does. I have, like I said, I haven't. I'm not the expert on it, and I didn't write any of it. Yeah. But uh, to my knowledge, um, when I dove into the source, the the engine was rewritten a lot of times to be, uh, like I said, more performant, uh, more performant, and uh, there have been a lot of changes to it. And so a lot of the low level stuff has changed. But when I took a deep dive into it before it was rewritten the last time, there was a, uh, I believe there was a certain type of DOM diffing, but I, I can't be, comp I, I guess you can't quote me 100% on that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, are, are there any other questions? I think that's it. That's all the questions from here. I've got kind of a slightly off, top, off topic one, uh, which is... Uh, Morgan, can you hear him? One more question? Uh, yes, yes, I yes, can. So, so it's not directly about what you've got here, but... Um, so in, in terms of shipping apps at the moment, uh, I've, got, I've got an Android uh, phone here now. Can I go to the App Store um, and download a, a really impressive, famous app today? Can you go to the App Store and download an impressive, famous app today? Yeah, is there, is there a showcase app that you'd like to highlight? Um, right now, I'm trying to. Th I know there were a couple that were built uh, using the old version of the framework, but our new version of the framework is still. We're still working on it, and so I'm not sure if I, I think some of the API may change, and it is still really new. So um, as far as uh, production ready apps right now. I don't think there are any. I know that within our or our old version of the framework, there are several. One of them that comes to mind is Bubbles, but uh, which is like some file sharing uh, thing. And there were a, I can't think of the other ones right now. But like I said, you can reach out on the the famous community Slack and ask around and. Um, there have been people sharing all sorts of, uh, uh, I know web apps, but not uh, explicitly like uh, native apps or exported to native. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, we're running close to time as well, but are there any, any other questions? Anything else? Okay, okay uh, that, that sounds like it then. Perfect. Thank you, Morgan. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Hopefully okay. that was helpful. Yeah.